<laughs> Julie Hansberry here coming to you from sunny Southern California today. And uh, my colleague, the awesome Darla DeGrandy, is in sunny San Diego. So we're both enjoying some California sun. So excited to have you all here today. And uh, we're really excited to share with you. So let me, let me just share a little bit about why this even came about. Um, Darla and I were having lunch on the beach a couple weeks ago. And as always, we were having this really great conversation. And her and I are all about providing value. Like we just love to share and, and give value and ideas to our, our network. Um, we're just really all about givers gain and that whole bit. And uh, we were having this great conversation on attraction marketing and relationship marketing. And Darla was like, wait, wait, we need to record this so we can share it. So we had this great idea to do a call, do a webinar. Um, and I'm going to interview her today and have her share some of the great stuff we were talking about at lunch a couple weeks ago. So, um, Darla, I'm going to let you share a little bit about your story later. But, um, you know, what I love about this, and I think this is another reason why you and I sync so much, is we truly believe that, you know, if, if you want success that somebody's already created, go to them, ask them, they'll teach you, they'll share. The most successful people in the world are always willing to share what they needed to do to get where they are today. If you study any of the great leaders out there today, it's, it's true. They all have books, they all have webinars like this. I mean, they're always willing to put their content out there. And you and I are very much the same. And we also love sharing other people's content to provide value. And you truly are an entrepreneurial inspiration for anybody who even has a slightest desire to do anything regarding starting their own business. Um, you are so inspiring. Your own story is so powerful. High school dropout, you didn't go to college, 19 years old, you not only started and built one successful business, you've done it multiple times, and you're going to share a little bit about that. But I just want to thank you so much because what we're going to talk about today isn't really anything new. It's this, this idea of attraction marketing and relationship marketing has been around for years. Um, I think recently people have just given it names that we can all understand or relate to. I don't know. But you really were doing this years ago before the internet, before people were doing websites and internet marketing and email marketing and all of that. I mean, this is really old school stuff, but so incredibly effective. And I just can't wait for us to delve deep and share with our audience today. So for those of you that are joining us, please drop in the chat box what profession you're in, what business you're in, what business are you either building or trying to build or start? If you have any questions around any of that, please share. Um, we'll be going over Q&A later towards the end. We're also recording this today, so if you happen to be one of those people who are catching the recording later, and we'll be sharing it out to all of our channels, um, don't hesitate to add comments to the comment section when you see the replay, because we will be checking these feeds from time to time, and we will be getting back to you. If you have questions or comments, we will be reaching out. So don't be shy. We'd love to hear from you, and we'd love to share. So, so Darla. Tell everybody, for those few out there that may not even know who you are, <laughs> um, just what your, what your expertise is like. Why should people listen to Darla DeGrandy when it comes to building a business and this whole idea of attraction marketing? Tell us a little bit about how you got started in your own businesses and what drove your success. Yeah, thanks, Julie, for that awesome introductory. And I'm super excited to be here. And yes, we all do share. And that's how we all learned. I, I, every time I share my story, which has been hundreds of times over all the years, I always say I've got to go find a Guinness Book of World's Record book because that's really truly where my inspiration began. When I was a little girl, I used to read that book and I used to read all the stories and be like, what could I do to make it in the Guinness Book of World's Record? You know, I just thought everybody did that. You know, I just did. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to pogo stick for 15 days in a row and, you know, whatever. <laughs> I just, I just will. I, I would read that book nonstop and I'd get a new one every year and there was a story in there and it just stuck and it was the story of the number one salesman and when you're a little kid you never think about being a salesman or anything and I just the story stuck that this guy sent cards and he grew grew his business to the point where he was sending 14,000 cards a month to people and he had employees that that's all they did and as as I've been interviewed over all the years I'm able to look back and the people who interview me, I've been interviewed by some very famous people and, you know, big time networkers and multimillionaires and stuff like that. And when they hear my story, they give me ideas about why I became who I was. And, you know, mo not most recently, but 
as we get older, I'm 51 now, but in the last, you know, when you're a kid, you never want to grow up and be like your parents, right? Well, I'm my mother reincarnated, but she's still alive. <laughs> and, and now I'm like, yeah, I even have my mother's nose. I'm noticing my nose is looking like hers. and That's okay too, you know? And so I'm just my mother in a modern day version, really. And my mom was a very, very, very powerful woman. She was very connected. She was liked by many. She was a politician for 16 years. And when her funeral comes, it'll be standing room only because she was one of those people that really knew how to treat other people with kindness and to create human connections. And even still to this day, she's 83 years old, still to this day, Julie, because she doesn't have social media. So she never sees any of this. She doesn't have a, even a smartphone. She doesn't have an ATM card, a debit card. Like she doesn't even show she's alive. If you go search her credit, she's not even in a, a person that's ever existed. She can't even get a target card because they told her she <laughs> has no credit. <laughs> she has no credit. And so, but she's still that lady today that goes at Christmas time and buys those Hershey candy bars, puts a candy cane on top, slips a $10 bill inside. She's got a stack of them this tall. One goes to the trash man, to the ladies at Walmart, to the lady, to the guy who does her car, to the plumber, to the gardener, to the, you know, she goes out and to the neighbor, to the little kids, to the little neighbor kids and to the, you know, that's still my mom today. And I just do it, but I do it in a different way. And I, and I got that from her. And mm -hmm. so I'm basically history repeating itself, but I had a very entrepreneurial mind when I was young. I just, I didn't fit in the box of school. Like if I got a C, we went for ice cream, you know, where right. I had a child who has a 4.2 GPA or whatever that thing's called, never, hardly ever does homework, get has never not had an A. I'm like, where did you come from? You know? <laughs> exactly. Probably some of your teachers are thinking this girl will never be a success at anything, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, fortunately for me, my husband, her father, was one of those 12 year college students. So we make this really great yoked couple. You know, I'm the high school dropout and he's the 12 year college student brain of knows all, all the book stuff and I don't even know North from South. So she's got this like balance of both of us. And, you know, she always right. goes, I know I sound like my mom, but I look like my dad because <laughs> she's got my ability to speak and he's shy and I'm not and kind of goes like that. And so, so you really unknowingly were probably, it was probably ingrained in very early to be like this. I mean, we are a product of our environments, right? But yeah. what's, what's great about this too, is this isn't anything anyone cannot learn. Yeah. how to do more of right yeah. um i just want to mention for those of you who may not be aware darla has mentioned she's been interviewed by lots of people and she's also been recently mentioned in three best-selling books um one is better than beach money by jordan adler um the other one um, is life's real currency i don't have a copy of that here um in my office but life's real currency by brendan michael sanchez and then my personal favorite the Power of Human Connections by Cody Bateman. And her story's been shared in all three of these books. And uh, you just really, uh, gosh, again, so inspiring. So let's delve into how, how you got started, how you decided to become an entrepreneur, and then we can delve into your keys to success in building your businesses. Yep, and I'll, and I'll try and make it short because you know me, I can talk for hours on this topic because <laughs> <Thank> my, <you. laughs> my, my passion truly is to get people to understand that things can be done differently. My mother was not an entrepreneur. I was one of those kids that was raised at daycare. My mom was working all the time and I just, I didn't want to be like that. I was very fortunate to have an, um, uh, a mentor when I was young, one of my very dearest friends, they were really super wealthy. And so I had entrepreneurs and I learned about leverage, you know, leverage. I learned be the lev, be the, Create leverage instead of be the leverage. And she used to always tell me, Darla, be the boss, not the employee. Whatever you're going to do, be the boss, not the employee. And my mom was the employee. And that's why my, I never got to see my mom. She was a single mom. My parents divorced when I was nine. And that was before child support. So she had to work three jobs and work really hard to raise her kids. And so I never saw her. And at this mentor of mine, she just drilled that into my head to be the boss. Don't work for the boss build leverage instead of be the leverage. And I didn't understand what that meant, but it was just drilled into my head. So therefore, when I went out into the world to figure out what I was going to do, you know, I, I couldn't do well in school. I didn't have the drive or the desire for going to college. And I just couldn't sit in a classroom. I couldn't focus. I was too 
outside, you know? And so I did what most high school dropouts do and I went to beauty school. <laughs> and, and so I went to beauty school and got my license really young and I only had a job for, I would say maybe six months. And I'm like, okay, I gotta work for the boss, not be the boss. And fortunately for me, I got a job at a salon that was really busy and the owner sat on a black leather couch in the lobby in his BMW parked in the front and he had a big, huge house and all of us were lined up just doing hair all day long. And I was like, I'm never going to drive a BMW and live in his kind of house if I don't figure out how to get out of here and be the boss. And that was just drilled in my head. I said, I got to get people working for me so I can sit on the couch and make money off them. And that's all I knew. And that was my jump into entrepreneurism. And so once I got into business, I do not know why the story of the Guinness Book of World's Records stuck, but... I had no money to open a salon. I had no money for advertising. So I said, we're going to start writing cards to our customers and we're going to write, thank you for your business. And this is back in the day. This is 30 years ago. Yeah. There was no colored printers. It was Avery labels. It was probably before Avery labels. It was <laughs> printers, you know, and you tore the paper off the side. And so that's what we did. And we would write thank you cards and thank you for your visit and haven't seen you in a while. And we wrote those cards and have found out people's birthdays and wrote their birthdays. And fast forward, business grew. We did really good. And we kept opening salons and opening salons. And I had a partner at the time. And right about the nine year mark, I was like, I was so tired of competing with all these people fighting for the same customers. Oh, let's offer a discount and let's lower our prices and let's run a promotion and all that. And I said, you know what? I know that I know how to attract a higher social economic scale clientele. And I know that we can become the most expensive salon in town. And so I tried to sell my partner on this and she wasn't buying it. So I bought her out at the nine year mark. I bought her out. And I went and I said, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to open the first day spa out here in the Palm Springs area that's not connected to a resort. And I am going to build the largest salon out here. And I did it. And so fast forward over time, we ended up in the top 100 fastest growing salons in the country. We reinvented the industry by thinking outside of the box and doing things that no other salons were doing. And I had mail rooms in my salons where people sat and that's all they did is send cards nonstop, thanking customers, appreciation, appreciating them, happy anniversary, making them feel special, making them feel valued, making them, telling them thank you for the role that you've played in our business, you know, making that connection like I read about in the Guinness Book of World's Record way back then. And it worked. And so came the, this thing called email. And, when email, <laughs> and then my space, my employees were walking around talking about how they could talk to a friend in another state, in another place, in this thing called my space. And I was like, wow, how are you doing that? And then I learned about this thing called the World Wide Web. I'm like, wow, that's fascinating, the World Wide Web. And so I knew somehow I had to get on the World Wide Web, this thing called the World Wide Web. That's so I can touch the world for business. So I thought I had to go back to school and I was like, oh, I can't do this. I can't go back to school to get a degree. So I can <laughs> get on this thing called the World Wide Web. Anyway, so that's kind of my story, how fast forward. And so when email came, I did what everybody else did. And I said, let's get rid of the employees, the overhead, the payroll, the paper, the printing and everything. And let's go instant to email. Let's save on postage. And it, and it was one of the biggest mistakes I ever made in business because I gave up the personal connection that I had with clients. And that was the beginning of the downward spiral of business. You don't see it at the time because all you're seeing is that you're saving payroll and you're saving on the cost of business and the cost of paper goods and all that time and labor that went into all that printing when you could just send an email. And it worked because back then uh, your mail was getting saturated and email was like the new fascinating thing. It worked for a while, but now, you know, I, I can't even tell you the last time I've looked at an email that little bubbles always got two numbers before the <laughs> comma, you know, in the tens of thousands. And I've gotten multiple email addresses and I can't even tell you what they are and what's in them. I just don't even do email anymore. And so that was a big Make lesson. For me. It's not the delete button, right? Yeah. I don't even do that. You My husband delete a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you can't stand those little red bubbles. He's like, I can't look at your phone. <laughs> 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 totally. So tell us 
at what point, I know you transitioned out of that business because you were pretty much forced to, right? We had the economy crash and things were crazy. And so tell us about your next adventure and how you built that and how this whole attraction marketing served you again yeah. when you built your next business. So the crash, I, I made it through the crash of 92 because I was still writing and keeping personal connections. And I thought for sure I was a recession proof because I thought, wow, nobody goes bald and quits doing their hair when hard times come. And so then came the crash of 08. And what had happened is this is the whole transition time of email and social media coming on and people shifting in the way they did business and the way money moves, the way transactions are created, you know, it started shifting. And so I got caught up in all this. And in 08, we were doing $3 million a year. We were living debt free. We had 49 employees, total of five locations. We were just cranking in business and then came the crash. And the crash of 92 hit the middle class. It didn't hit the upper class, but the crash of 08 started with the upper class and we were the first to start the crumble. We started going out of business and the plates, you know, you're spinning plates and it's all crashing down. That happened to us before this thing called short sales was even created. That's wow. because our clientele were paying $200 for a haircut, $500 to get your hair cut and highlighted, $100. You know, it was, we were catering to the very wealthy type of clientele. And uh, so it just hit them first. You know, they're the ones that were going bankrupt before their grass even had a chance to die in their front yard, you know, where the sign goes up that your house is up for foreclosure. I always used to say, drive around and check people's pools, see if it's green, check the grass, see if it's dying. <laughs> <laughs> and so that, that's, so that I was very fortunate enough for me to be able to get into a, a customer had been driving me crazy to take a look at a network marketing opportunity back then. And I didn't believe in network marketing. I was typical person, skeptical, not understanding how network marketing even worked because my brain was not educated on it. And so I had gotten a network marketing company six months prior just to try and make an extra, an extra $10,000 to cover payroll. My payroll was $55,000 every two weeks. And, uh, Fortunately enough for me, it ended up working. And so I was able at the time that one was crashing, the other one was growing. And so I was able to flip and reinvent my life very quickly and get back up on top again, because I understand leverage. You know, if people can understand leverage and how leverage works and how you can't create wealth with the works of your own two hands, in order to create wealth, you need an army of hands working for you or with you. And so stop and think about where you lie in somebody's, you know, business structure. Are you the hands that create wealth for somebody else? Or do you get your wealth from hands working for you? Like my boss did. My boss sat right. on the couch at that salon and made money off of all of us. Anyway, in the end of the day, it's all about human connections. You know, people, if they would study this, this right here, the power of human connections I made a post on Facebook a couple weeks ago that said, would you rather have a million friends or a million dollars? And it was interesting because hundreds of people were commenting and, you know, the entrepreneurs that understand your net work is a direct reflection of your net wealth are all posting a million friends. <laughs> any day. And then the people who work jobs that have never made a million dollars or lost a million dollars are posting, I'll take a million dollars any day because I don't need friends if I have a million dollars. And I'm like, Wow, people just don't get it. A million relationships is worth billions of dollars <laughs> because yeah. who do you make money from? Your friends. And most people say, I don't want to make money off my friends. Well, honey, I'm here to tell you if you don't want to make money off your friends, I sure do because that's where money comes from. Your <laughs> friends. <laughs> your boss is making money off your friends. When people make that comment, they're looking at it from the wrong perspective, right? Because we're, we, we are an economy as a society. Everything we do is buying and selling something, whether it be a product or a service. So, yeah. you know, the, you kind of got to get away from that thought. So tell me how you think your experience building relationships in your salon business do you, do you think that attributed to your rapid success in your next business venture when you, when you got into network marketing? Do you think it was a vital key? In every business that I've done, I've been successful at. And that is because I understand 
the art of human connections. And so I want you guys to just study this for a minute. Master the art of human connections and you will attract an abundance of opportunities, referrals, friends, and love. I want you to think about these four things right here. In business or in life, an opportunity, a new job, a new car at a great discount, a great deal on a vacation, box seats at a Lakers game, whatever, an invitation to something, that's an opportunity. Where does it come through? It comes through a human connection, right? Someone that knows you, loves you, and likes you. If you're in business, where does a referral come from? A referral comes from a human connection. Somebody that knows you, loves you, and yeah. likes you. Where does friends come from? An introduction of another friend. And where does love come from? Through people. What exists outside here? Not much. Not much. And so in life, if you just focus on building connections, and learning how to turn a stranger into a friend, how to get from somebody's head to their heart faster, and how to keep them here, and how to get people that are talking about you behind your back to be talking about you in a positive way, you're golden. And so that's kind of where three, a little over three years, three and a half years ago, I was introduced to a new tool that I have in my toolbox that I build human connections with. And not just social media, not just text message, not just, you know, whatever everybody else does, but it's this system of this company. It's a 15 year old company called send out cards. Julie, you've known about send out cards yep. for years before me. I always say, how come nobody told me about this? Because if somebody would have told right. me about this, I know for a fact, two things. If I would have known about this system, Back in my salon days, it would still be open, which I'm glad it's not. And I know that if I would have known about this system, this is a whole other story, but my mm -hmm. sister would quite possibly still be alive today had I have had a way to be able to make a human connection with her like this system allows us to do. And so, uh, Julie, share some examples. You're the master at this. You've known it way longer than me. Oh, gosh. You know, I just want to interject here part of my own personal story because I, you know, as you know, my husband and I have moved a lot, 13 times in 30 years. And when we move, what do we do? We, we need services, right? And who do we ask? We don't, we've never gone to the phone book. We ask our friends, we ask our neighbors, and those people have built human connections with people that we're looking for, right? that's the power in this. I mean, it's, it's never ending and it's free, right? Um, <laughs> that's your biggest racing fans. You know, when, when I sign up a customer, and I, I love this example. Um, I always tell particularly business professionals, you know, your branding is beautiful. And I know we all spend all this time on our logos and making everything look so professional, but your people, your circle really just wants to know who you are as a human. They want you to be real sometimes and just be fun and let your guard down a little bit. And I tell my customers, one of the easiest things you can do is think of a holiday, any holiday. Um, I like the obscure ones like St. Patrick's Day and Valentine's Day, but any holiday, go into your local Target, Walgreens, whatever store, go to the holiday aisle, load up your arms with all that tchotchke stuff they're trying to sell you, snap a selfie, put it on a picture, and tell your, tell your circle how much you love them and how much you appreciate them. One of my customers actually did that and sent me the result. And he said he got more response from this than any other mailing or any other promotion he had ever put out there. People calling him saying, I love the picture, love the card and the sentiment behind it. Do more of this. Um, some of the other fun, creative stuff you can do. Again, I like to think outside the box like you, Darla. Um, offer your clients and customers to send their children letters from Santa Claus. I do this every year. It's a huge hit. And uh, they get letters from Santa Claus. Um, I love silly jokes. Like, again, forget about the formal. Let's have fun, right? A silly joke card. Um, as you know, send out cards. Our most popular gift is our brownies. I love sending people brownies all the time. Just that happy mail in the mailbox. Um, so, and again, you know, there doesn't have to be a reason. I'm sure you get this question too. Well, what reasons do I have to send cards? You don't need a reason. The non, the strange, odd, nonsensical. Card. Oh, that's a cute one. Just send a card with a simple message. I'm thinking of you. I appreciate you. You mean the world to me. Whatever. Keep it short and sweet. But 
the power of these, I mean, you and I could go on and on and on about the stories we have, the stories we've shared, the results we've gotten. So actually, let's talk a little bit about, because um, I know you have a very strategic plan you use for your business clients, where you have them do some very specific things when they get started using send out cards. I'll Can you share a little bit about that? Yep, I'll give you one that I'm working with right now as we speak. And so I have a lady that's getting ready to open the first female owned um, nightclub that is a VIP for the wealthy here in San Diego. And it's opening in six months. And I said to her, I says, do you want a group of people to come out on your behalf for your grand opening party? And she said, absolutely. I said, let me show you how to now pave that way so that when six months comes, you're going to be able to have an abundance of people walking through your front doors instead of waiting until you open to go try and advertise like all these other people are doing, pitching and selling and pushing people away from them. I said, I want you to sit down and I want you to make a list of 100 people that have positively affected your life since you were little that have made you who you are today. What school teacher inspired you? What counselor gave you great advice? What neighbor was always there to encourage you? What family friend, and, I, and she's like, but I haven't talked to these people in years. I said, exactly. I want their name on a list. And, and I, she says, well, how do I get their addresses? I says, don't worry about that. Step one is, who, who you give credit that made you a success today? Who was there to inspire you? Like this lady that was in my life when I was young that, was a, that told me, be the boss. I have so much gratitude and appreciation to this woman and her family because I would not be where I am today had I not have had that woman to tell me, don't take that path. And, you know, anyway. uh -huh. so she says, okay, I've got my list of 100. So tomorrow we're meeting and what we're going to do is we're going to create a gratitude card. And this is what I do with every one of my clients and every single one of my clients that do this have a 100% success rate because what it does is it takes you, this person who they haven't talked to in forever, and it takes you right into their heart. And so the gratitude card is just say, is to say, I just want you to know how much I appreciate the role you have played in my life. You have been a positive influence to me and I would not be where I'm at today nor who I am had I have never met you. I just wanted to say thank you. Now, people are going to call her in tears. <laughs> in tears. We've all experienced it. It, it feels so good. Every single time, yes. And what that'll do is reopen a relationship that is 100% based on love and kindness and no pitching and selling. Now, when that woman goes and opens that business, those people are going to want to come out to see what they played a role in to be able to create this woman's success. And they're going to bring their pom-pom energy and cheer this woman on. And that's how I created my success. That's how all of my clients do it. That's, that's the second card I actually send. The first card I tell people to send is to their spouse. I want you to sit down and write out a card, a beautiful card to your spouse and tell them why you love them. And they're like, Oh my gosh, I've never done that. I'm like, <laughs> let, me, let me show you what it's going to do for your marriage. I mean, yeah, totally. People, yeah, people just, people are so busy today. They don't yeah. even stop to think about how much that would make someone feel just to know how much you love them. You know what? I've never, it's been a long time since I've told you all the reasons why I love you. I love you because you're the father of my child. And you are amazing. And I wouldn't want anyone else to be the father of my child. I love you because you support me and you back every, every dream that I have and you believe it. Do you want to know what your spouse would do if you did that? I mean, like, seriously, it's huge. <laughs> yeah. And well, then I, mean, so back, I love how you explain the whole effect. I like we get real scientific here. If you want to know, like the effect of the dopamine that happens when someone goes to the mailbox and you know they 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 find a card and and the reaction and the emotion that happens when they open up that card that you took time to send yes you can't get that effect from any traditional marketing piece uh -huh. you're never I, gonna I tell, get it 
I tell people all the time, when is the last time you've been driving down the freeway and you saw one of those $50,000 billboards pulled over and called the owner that you knew and said, I can't believe you did this for me. God, <laughs> that just makes me feel so good. Yeah, it just doesn't. Yeah, happen. yeah. In fact, I shared another personal story, you know, with our moves all the time. Um, we're, we've been the corporate move, right? We're the guaranteed sale for the realtor when we show up in town, we're the guaranteed sale when we leave a couple years later. And there's only been one realtor in all of those moves that sold us the house and then relisted it for us when we left town because he took time to build a relationship with us. And I will say that, you know, I got the, I got the fancy glossy postcards they send in the mail bragging about what they did, but some of them never even bothered to send a thank you card. Mm -hmm. Never even bother to send a thank you card. It's incredibly powerful. And I just, I love the fact that we're sharing this here today and maybe opening up the eyes to some people that, you know, hey, all your fancy traditional marketing stuff is great, but if you really want to have the most effect on your client list, your networking list, your circle of influence, the biggest impact, focus on building relationships. And we have a really cool tool that can help you do that. Mm -hmm. So, oh, this is, this is fantastic. So Darla, I know you also offer, not only do you and I offer to coach people using the tool of send out cards, but you also have your own coaching program where you help people delve even deeper into this whole philosophy, the mindset of positive thinking and all that good stuff. So share a little bit about what you've been doing with your coaching program. It's really exciting. A lot of people don't understand that if they can't, like I just finished a Zoom with a new client. 10 minutes before this thing started. And she was saying how she's never taken a selfie and she never will because she doesn't like the way she looks. And, you know, that just breaks my heart because it's a hundred percent in her mental makeup. Right. You know, and people have to start with how they see themselves. I was a 200 pound, 12 year old, 13 year old. I was 200 pounds at 13 years old before they had plus sizes in girls clothes. My mother shopped in the boys section for my clothes. I wore boys corduroy pants, boys tennis shoes, and boys t-shirts. I played on the boys flag football football team. And I, in the Cinco de Mayo dance in grade school, I was a boy instead of a girl. And that's just because I was a big kid. <laughs> and so I didn't have self-esteem. I didn't like the way I looked either. And so I had to learn all this personally. So. I truly believe that all your life experiences that you've gone through are your lessons to be able to teach and lead other people to go through. And it's a hundred percent in your mind. And it wasn't until I learned this and I learned how to reinvent my mind to control the thoughts, to be able to manifest and attract, to raise my vibration, to be able to change my vocabulary and take the toxic words out of my vocabulary and build attraction words I have one of the rarest relationships, the, the, the relationships that parents lay in bed and dream about wanting to have with their teenagers. I have that. And it's all because of the courses that I've taken, the classes that I've had, the experiences that I've gone through. And until you can master the art of your own connection with yourself from your subconscious mind to your conscious mind, you cannot go out and sell yourself to somebody else because you penetrate not that you don't believe. So if you don't believe in yourself, why should anyone believe in you? And so that's the power of what it is that I teach. So I teach not only how to master the art of human connections, but first how to start from within, master the art within yourself so that you can change from the visualization and the energy and the way you vibrate and learn how to vibrate higher, get out from underneath the muck of what hangs out down here and get up here to what vibrates up here and you'll connect with new people and new opportunities. And so it's everything in my life that I've gone through being able to now pay forward to other people. I just love it. Oh, I just got chills listening to you and I totally agree. I mean, personal growth and development is so incredibly vital if you want to be successful in anything in your life, but especially so if you're trying to build your own business because it's so much is up here and you, you got to keep that, you got to keep that in a positive state. Okay, do you want to go ahead and uh, check the chat and see if you have any questions coming up? And I just, if you, if any of you listening, whether you're on live today or you're on the recording, if you want to know more about this whole philosophy of attraction marketing, um, 
or if you want to know anything, any specific questions about attracting, retaining, and growing your business, or growing a list, or you know, just having a greater impact on the world, post post what you want to learn more about in the chat or the comments if you're seeing this as a replay, and uh, we will be doing our best to get back to you, answer your questions, give you some more information, direct you to some more information. Uh, but whatever we can do to help you, because again, we're all about, we're really givers gain, and we love providing value, and that's what, that's why we're doing this call today. So do we have any questions I coming do. up on the chat there? I have the most popular question that we always get asked is how yeah. to get the addresses. And trust me, very few people have the addresses when they start this, because nobody sends mail anymore. But I promise you that once you learn how to get the address, it's super easy and super simple. You'd be amazed what you can find on the internet when you go Google something. And there's apps for everything out there. Yes, there is. In fact, I have a really great trick. I teach my people to set up a Google form and email everybody. And uh, it works every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And just ask. Ask people, yeah, hey, just, what's, what's, your, what's your mailing address? And every once in a while, they'll say, why? And I just say, because I want to send you some love in the mail and they never tell me no. No, I always love it when they, I ask for their mailing address and they give me email. Yeah, I get that a lot too. <laughs> I'm saying, no, no, the snail mail one, you know, the yeah. post mail. The post -mail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. You know, about you, Carla, but it never gets old when I actually meet with somebody and I send them a card like from my phone and I like tell them, okay, in three to five days, you're going to get a real card in your mailbox. They're like, Huh? How'd you do that? Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's magic. It's magic. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions we have on there that, that you want to go ahead and cover? No, a lot of people sending their industries and stuff like that, you know, awesome. and, and what I want everybody to understand business is business. The definition of business is something that requires an investment, whether it's an offline business or an online business, a brick and mortar structure or an at home business. It requires some type of an investment. And then it requires a transaction between a customer to a product or a service, and there must be a profit in order for there to be business, okay? That's business, it doesn't matter. And so the, the thing that creates the transaction is a customer, a human connection. So the more customers you can, the more people you can learn to attract into your life, the more customers you have to do transactions with of products or services. And so business is business, you guys, it doesn't matter. Put, put kindness out there on a daily basis and just touch people. Lift them up and inspire them. And even more so is this powerful in today's time because the depression rate is so high. <sighs> you would not believe how many people never get touched. They're not getting a hug. They're from anyone. They're divorced. Their children are grown and gone. They're sitting in their house all day. They're sitting in a cubicle and an office that they can't stand. Nothing positive is coming in. There's no embracement of love to release dopamine. Where is their dopamine coming from? A pill that the doctor gives them to release dopamine in their brain because they're depressed. And do you know what they recommend when somebody is depressed or having a panic attack? Hug them, hug them. I have a couple friends who suffer from panic attacks and anxiety. And when they do, they immediately come to me and say, can I have one of your hugs, please? I need a hug. Can you just hug me? You know, cause I know how to hug because I'm a person who understands dopamine and connections. And it's an, it's unbelievable how many people will get your card and call you in tears crying because they're holding dopamine for the first time in so long. Anyway, I can go from us. Yeah, we, we, you and I both. <laughs> so we'd love to share more with you if you'd like more information. So if I invited you to this chat today and you want more information on send out cards, please reach out to me. If Darla invited you, reach out to her. Or if you were invited to this presentation by anybody else, please reach back to them. We are more than willing to sit down with you and share this wonderful tool with you and help you really maximize your own relationship marketing and traction marketing efforts. And uh, let's just all together make the world a better place, sending people lots of love and uh, heartfelt greetings in the mail, right? Awesome, yes. And if you ever want us to zoom in and speak to your staff or your team or a group of people, don't hesitate, just ask us. We'll be Absolutely, we love to do that all day long, don't we? <laughs> Yes, All right, Darla, any, any closing thoughts from you before we go? Nope, that's it. Well, I'd just like to close this by a, a favorite quote that I have actually printed on the back of my cards. 
I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you make them feel. The late, great Maya Angelou, my, well, one of my all-time favorite quotes. So all of you, have an amazing day. And again, we're going to keep this chat going on social media feeds with recordings. So we hope to hear back from you. And uh, maybe we'll do this again. Yeah? yeah? Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Right. We take requests. <laughs> Bye. All right, got it. Have an amazing, amazing day. And uh, for everyone out there, make someone else's day amazing too. Thanks yeah. so much, everyone, for being here. Bye. Bye. Bye.